Hi, I'm Josh, and just want to let you guys know ahead of time, I'm probably not going to be making it through the entire episode due to uh, time constraints. There's uh, important things happening right after I leave. So if you don't mind, I hope you'll indulge me. We're going to try using some new technologies to uh, use my likeness and just insert it in wherever it's needed uh, throughout the show. So you'll probably see someone, some image that looks just like me and it's like talking as if it, I was there. So don't be tricked. Like, don't be fooled about, uh, thinking that I'm still there the whole episode. That's why it might get a little weird, but, uh, thank you. And, uh, hope you enjoy the show. Welcome back to a murder mystery version of Popcorn and Beers. And you know what? Where some use tomatoes and others use thumbs, we use the stuff that gets you drunk. Now, it's going to be hard, or it may even be a mystery, as to how we're going to talk about a murder mystery without spoiling the movie. But we're going to do our best. So... Jordan, you were looking forward to this uh, Butter on Top, so why don't you let the audience know what it was that we were watching as our Butter on Top film this week. We watched A Haunting in Venice, mm -hmm. a, another chapter in the Hercule Poirot, Poirot. detective Poirot. saga based on the books by Agatha Christie, right? Agatha Christie. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. You know, I found this movie entertaining. I I just thought my I don't want to give I, it's hard to just give any details about this movie and kind of not spoil something. So you know it. I felt like the two didn't mix. I felt okay. like we were mixing oil and water here. I felt like Hercule Poirot and his um, you know his antics and his demeanor and just every, it didn't mix with a paranormal sort of. Thing that they were trying to sell you on like oh is it possible that something paranormal could be going on here it's like no obviously not there is not going to be something actually paranormal yeah. going on here like i'm sorry or was that... there <sighs> or was there yeah oh well, maybe <laughs> it was uh, a little predictable for me <laughs> I, really I thought even I... okay Except for, you know, there's a conclusion that you, I thought was very predictable. And then like the aftermath that they kind of mm -hmm. show you is like, oh, okay, that's good. That's a good little thing. I wasn't expecting a, a little direction that I wasn't expecting this to go. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought it was a, a, an entertaining movie. Uh, this, there were some parts where there was, it was definitely scary. Like, you know, oh, it's it a couple me. jump scares that it got popped me. you. A little pop Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. uh, very beautiful movie aesthetically. Ooh, um, yeah. Not there was great actors, but not all of the acting was great. The, there, there, there wasn't much room, really, though, right? <laughs> yeah, not a lot of room. I don't know. For, yeah, I don't know. Michelle Michelle Yeoh did not have as she many was, lines as I thought she would. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, Just and uh, the whole seance scene where she. <laughs> Are spinning around in her chair and stuff, doing weird stuff. That was... yeah. <laughs> listening, listening. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was probably the most irritating part of the movie was the what? listening. Listening. Yeah. <laughs> That's one of my new favorite things to do now to people when they're talking, and I don't yeah. care. Listening. In the middle, like, while they're talking, mid sentence. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like Tina Fey didn't act very well in this movie. Yeah, she was Tina Fey. Else. She wasn't a character. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> she was basically the teacher that she played in Mean Girls. Yep. <laughs> um, I give it, I was, you know, I was very in between a popcorn and one and two. When the ending kind of played out and it was kind of predictable to me, I was like, this is definitely a popcorn and one, a very good popcorn and one. But then that after kind of resolved to the story, um, I'm going to give it, I'm going to squeak it into a popcorn too. Popcorn there wasn't too. anything like extremely bad about this movie that I, I thought mm -hmm. it wasn't great. I gave Tina Fey a bit more credit than you did. I thought she played the plucky fast talking writer pretty well, you know, because yeah. you say she's Tina Fey. Well, guess what Tina Fey's job was 
she was a yeah. writer. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fast talking writer in New York. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, you guys are like kind of typecast to me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what her yeah. job was. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mind her. I like the quote scary stories make life less scary. I thought that was mm. uh, an interesting line. That Italy is, good. is blowing up for films, huh? Like, Italy is getting so many. <clears throat> yeah, I wonder. Films. There's got to be a tax break scenario. There's got to be a tax yeah. break scenario, you know? Yeah, you got Mission Impossible, Fast X, uh, this yep. one. I know there's some that I'm leaving out. A couple years ago, well, about five, six years ago, you had the original. Um, yeah, five, six years ago, maybe seven years ago, you had uh, Far From Home, right? Mm. Spider Man was filmed there. So, right in I'm this. not against it, you know? Show me a cool country. Give me ten movies with it. I'm fine. If you if you got Berlin for five movies, that I'd, I'd love to see Berlin. Why not? Whatever. So I will I will say this so I can get to Josh's uh, call. I, I took a page out of Josh's book. I put some solid camera work in this film. It was pretty. Oh, that's like it's in my. <laughs> <laughs> how, how the director was utilizing the camera angles, especially yeah. as the plot is revealed. Then the camera shot, the, the camera angles, the shots that they took, the way some of the scenes were filmed made a little bit more sense as the plot is revealed. I gave yep. it a pop one. I agree with Jordan. I saw right through the movie almost yeah, immediately. Yeah. Wait, okay, more... wait, 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 wait. Does that, for both of you, does that mean you know kind of all three of the things that were, because you didn't just say, you did it. There was more to the movie than that. You saw through all I was, that? I was more okay with the first reveal. Uh, yeah. And the very final reveal than the middle reveal. Um, the very final reveal, reveal at the end of the film, I found that interesting. And I found how they tied it in kind of wholesome, right? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Especially as, you know, there this movie takes place in an orphanage that was haunted. So the way they end the film was kind of fitting, right? Yeah. All the orphans that were in that orphanage, this is, I think this is in the trailer, were killed brutally. So mm -hmm. they kind of tied it together wholesomely. And I dug that. But yeah, the, the very first one was the most uh, interesting reveal to me. The I like the first one. Reveal, I thought that was good. <clears throat> the, yeah, the, the middle reveal, I was like, yep, knew it. Uh, <laughs> and the end reveal, I was like, okay, I see that. I get yeah, that. Yeah, it's a nice little, yeah, nice little butter on the top. Third, the, yeah, third exactly. one, the third one actually is the one that really caught me off guard. I, the first two I, I saw coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Well, um, yeah. Well, um, no. Oh, would you rate it? You go popcorn and two, popcorn and one. Pop, pop and one. Poppy one. I go pop one as well. Yeah, good camera work. They used it really well. I went to the theater. I had never been in the Dolby theater before. It was a lot bigger than unusual oh, for my the city. The sound was great. The sound was incredible, and also the seats vibrated like a like a gaming controller. Oh, so you were in like a, a immersive experience. Immersive. So like the seat was hitting every time there was a scare, and it was really really cool. <laughs> really cool. Love to see Venice. They did a really good job showing Venice. Even just the, the the way they explored that one building was beautiful. It's it's architecture that you kind of only see there, and really really good stuff. And they use the the building as a character almost not not like other places do as heavily, but it's still there. I'm not a big fan of excessive jump scares in in movies. This did not have that, but what it did have was a bird. And I hate birds. That was rude. No, thank you. Nice to see Venice. I give it a popcorn and one. Very beautiful. Great lighting. Great film work. Yeah. Perfect. All right. On to that drunk classic that I apologize in the production meeting for making you guys watch. But you guys have both thrown some clunkers at me. Some dude yeah. runs my cars. Yeah. Uh, you know, Belly. I actually had an appreciation for yesterday after I watched it. But I think Jordan made me watch that Stone Cold movie that was terrible. Uh, mm. What is it? It was Renegade. bad. It was fun. Oh, condemned. condemned. I know. Look at his face. It's one of his favorite movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Michaels. How dare you? How dare it was you? fun. <laughs> but uh, I made you guys watch Lucas, which is actually a pretty seminal film for me. I think between five years old and twelve years old, I watched that film quite a bit. I think it's one of my mom's. Really? I, think I it's can see that. Okay. Movies. I can see that. But uh, yeah, and it's kind of like I think. Some of the characters in it are, I, I tried to take after them or emulate them, but we'll get into my review a little bit later. I want to give Josh some floor space so he can tear me apart because I heard you guys were tearing me apart before I jumped into the production meeting. So, so what happened? Yeah, 
Uh, this movie was Catcher in the Rye, but for no reason. And the kid's not a total dick. He's just a weirdo. Synth City for the soundtrack, though, bud. That keyboard was going. Yeah. Even at times, I'm like, this is not the time for this. This is bad. Don't. What are you doing? <laughs> it's like he just learned how to use his synthesizer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know that you said you were going to give us like a clunker or something. Not on purpose, maybe. But you, you were getting a little liberal with it. But you also said last week that you were, because of football season kicking off, you wanted to give us a football movie. Yeah. And this is this is as much a football movie as Sandlot is a treehouse movie. <laughs> it's not a football movie at all. Uh, Jeremy Piven's in it. Nice to see him as the big jock because he's usually the little the little wiry squirrel boy. He talks fast. That was yeah. interesting. Nice to see some good old eighties uh, sexual abuse in the locker room. That was cool. <laughs> and they're pretty, playing happy music, sad. like horrifying. Yeah. Um, by the way, I what what they did to that kid, I've done of my own free will as like a, a, a dare. It is pretty bad, dude. It's not the fun. icy hot, dude. Yep. I, that an incident it, almost exactly like that happened at my high school, like the year before I played football one year, yeah. and literally people went to jail over it. Like high school <laughs> students went to jail. It's like it. it's it's sexual assault. Like it's yeah. it is what it is. Like hardcore <laughs> sexual assault. Yeah. Like really oh, bad. You're not allowed to touch a teenage boy's balls, even if it's to put Icy Hot on them. Yeah. But it, because it was the 80s, though, like, they they capped off that scene with him, like, trying to play it cool. And, like, haha, that was so funny what they did to him. Like, what? And then everything stopped after bad? that. You're a yeah. victim. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, oh, yeah. The fact that he would just, like, pick up pads. Like, the pads are locked up. You can't just suit yeah. up. Yeah. And he's expecting to be on the team and they're a week away from their first game. That means the team was set two months ago, dog. Like, yeah, or they've the summer. been playing. If that's varsity. If that's varsity, yeah, it was set over the summer. You can't just I'm on the team now. That's not how anything works. <laughs> um, and then he he tries. I mean, spoiler alert, guys. Don't see the movie, so it's not really a spoiler. But he tries to commit <laughs> by football, and. Then is the hero, and everyone just forgets that he just tried to. Um, not that everyone's aware of it. Anyway, really weird movie. Didn't know where it was going. That's a popcorn baby. Uh, last up, slow clap to the freeze frame is movie perfection. So I'll give it that. <laughs> All right, Jordan. What were your qualms before I get to my review? Uh, yeah, on that freeze frame, it was literally like the most uncoordinated. Uh, slow clap you've ever seen. Well, they're all white. They're all white. Yeah, there was, there no was I counted. There was one. There was one brother in the whole film, yeah. and he was yeah. in choir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> see, we got one. We got one. See, we got it. Get over here. Yeah. Uh, the movie opens up with a close up of what, in my mind, looks like a hell creature. I don't. Have close up of yeah. <laughs> I don't... I don't like close-ups of bugs. I get the symbolism, but I fast-forwarded through that so fast. And like, they nope, picked like, one nope. of the ugliest ones, too. Yeah, it was well, locust, horrifying. Locust, locust, locust. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. It was <laughs> it was terrifying for me. Um, yeah, he's a little awkward, but I don't. I really don't feel bad for the kid. Like, he's got game. Like, he's got a mouthpiece. He's got on. some he's game. Got, he's got Spider-Man he's wits. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's got, you know, uh, uh, kind of goth, emo y uh, young Winona Ryder fawning after him. Like, yeah, he's so bad for this kid. Like, he's kind of just a, a dick. Like, he's kind of just a jerk. Everyone is in high school, just like Charlie Sheen was, just like his girlfriend was. Everyone's yeah. a jerk in high school. And again, to take a, a page out of Josh's book, it was Shakespearean. I feel like it was like almost mod as some kind of Shakespearean novel. What do you think it might have been Shakespearean? Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little Shakespearean in there. Uh, oh, and I love, I love the '80s, the jocks and everybody. They look like they're forty. Every <laughs> dude, like they are not Kevin high looks school. like he's forty years old. Yeah. <laughs> How? What is that? Is that the the makeup, the lighting? They, did they just the eat 80s. too much lead back then, or the '80s? Yeah, <laughs> like half the cast of Grease was in their thirties. So yeah. Yeah, but I'm even looking at like the choir scene. You can tell some of those kids in the choir room were kids, but they looked yeah. old. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of asbestos and uh, yeah, yeah. Fl- fluoride, fluoride. And all right. 
um, <laughs> the cornball insults. Uh, what yeah. do they call them? Lucas sodomy or Luke? Leuke- no, leukemia. Oh, not maybe. leukemia. Luke. Luca. How oh, it's a cancer of the mouth, and I can't think cancer. of the name. Exactly, but that's, it doesn't yeah. stick. It's so dumb. Like, and it's just yeah. like, and like they say it like. 20 times before they actually explain what it is and then you still yeah. go like oh that's stupid like that's yeah. not even a good insult yeah. <laughs> the cancer of the mouth <laughs> yeah. i can't remember it's like leucotatious or something like that yeah yeah exactly yes it's something <laughs> like that uh i thought it had like an okay ending like i mean <laughs> just for and not like the actual ending where the freeze frame and the slow clap, like that was super corny, but just yeah. like, I'm glad that they just all accept him in the end. You know, I'm a sucker for like, just like a, at least the movie had made you feel good in the end. Uh, it's, like but they it's still, appreciated his effort for going yeah. out there and trying. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I give it a popcorn as well. All right. So <laughs> 80s montage open is a, a fixture of that time in film where they're going to open the film and it's going to be to a soundtrack (laughs) and the synthesizer, like Josh said. Uh, I thought that was funny. And then I immediately got uncomfortable at the very beginning of the movie. Do you know why I got uncomfortable at the beginning of the movie? Why is that? Some of those camera angles on her practicing tennis were uncomfortable. Yeah. (laughs) I was like, this is a... This is a bit far for some of yeah. these camera angles that they're they're being a bit liberal with their choices. Yeah, <laughs> where they're sure. putting this camera, uh, very eighties. Yeah, I put um, so much toxic masculinity, so much sexual <laughs> abuse. So Josh, I was just saying, uh, let's see if you can guess it since I already said it and you're just coming in. Where do you think at the very beginning of the film I got a tad uncomfortable? Um, the tennis yeah. staring. <laughs> yeah. it's not a him long staring. slow mo, bud. Not just that, just some of the camera angles yeah. that they chose to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't have like, to do that. I don't know if the camera needs to be there. We don't need to yeah. do that. They're fourteen, bud. <laughs> yeah, it was super uncomfortable with where they were putting that camera, and uh, all your stereotypes are incredibly prevalent in this movie. Any stereotype you could think of, and then there's just a unexplainable scene with Charlie Sheen. Now, totally explainable. Them and Homek washing his shirt after they made fun of him for not knowing to put the lid on the blender, right? Kind of, yeah. But, but then for no reason, no reason at all, he, t- he unlocks the ball cabinet and just starts playing soccer and <laughs> buzz around and talking to him. And I'm like, what is happening? <laughs> Why is he doing this? I've never been like, I'm so uncomfortable. I need to play with soccer balls and basketballs for no reason. Well, that's the jock thing. Hey, you want to see me do push-ups? Yeah. Yeah. You want to see it? What does he say? say Is like, how do you feel about being kissed by wide receivers? Yeah. (laughs) What is that? I mean, he really, he really nailed the, the way, I mean, it was authentic. Honestly, it was really bad, but very high school flirting, like real authentic, very innocent. Honestly, this is, at least the movie was cute in that regard. It nailed the, it was, the vibe. It was innocent. He had a severe case of hepatitis. Did you guys what? catch that? <laughs> Did oh, you yeah, guys yeah, catch yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm good <laughs> now. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. I was like, why yeah. would you choose that disease? Like mono yeah. would have been fine. You chose hepatitis. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, about the football scene, every single number was incorrect. <laughs> there would have been... <laughs> Like, like he's wearing 79 out there, That, that especially at that mm. time. At the position he was playing, he was not allowed to wear 79. I think their running back was number 72. Uh, <laughs> I think the principal told him he wasn't allowed to try out for the football team. Absolutely something a principal would not do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, there were so many instances in the football game where he would have gotten a delay of game. At, like, they have a 20 to 30 second conversation. The referee can't tell him not to break the rules. Like, the referee is just going to throw the flag when he breaks the rules. Also, they have multiple plays where Lucas just has his helmet off. He just doesn't have yeah. a helmet on. And it's it's insane to me. And here's the thing. They blow the play dead the moment a player loses his helmet. I've never, ever I, – I always thought that was crazy, too, when I first watched this as a young person that played football, where he just takes his helmet off to catch the ball. <laughs> Why would you ever do that? And then I love, at the end of the dog pile – 
the scrum to get the fumble. His glasses are shattered, and it looks like he got shot in the face with a shotgun. Yeah, because right? he really did go down really easy. You saw, yeah. like, pretty gentle. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it wasn't like vicious. heads crashing and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I think she big sistered him a lot. That was pretty funny. I, mm -hmm. I do think they embodied that dude, she's out of your league, mm. for sure. Like she, he, and he. Didn't yeah, but it wasn't ridiculous. Really. It was that it was a yeah. that was a very real story that they told yeah. that part, yeah. and that's just what happens in high school. And I think a lot of us have experienced that or know someone who did. I mean, hot take that was authentic. ready for a hot take. She's yeah. the villain in this movie. <laughs> oh, Super absolutely sweet, but she's absolutely the villain. She came like, in there, the catalyst for chaos. It just yep. destroyed everything. Fully intended on breaking up Cap with his girlfriend. Like that was fully intended. Like, it wasn't him finding yeah. her. She found him quite a bit. I don't right? think it was, like, calculated like she's an evil person. It was just like, well, I like him. And, oh, no, they broke up? Huh, okay. Well, you know, innocent <laughs> well, party in the whole She does say letter. on the stairs with Lucas, they broke up because of her. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, for me, it is a pop. And I'll give it a pop one for nostalgia, nostalgia purposes for me. So, no. really quickly, Josh, I know you're going to rattle through it. What were you watching? Okay, I'll tell you what I watched. For the first time, I watched Punisher Warzone. It's the Punisher okay. movie that everyone forgot. I, wait, we've <laughs> forgotten all of them. Um, <clears throat> this one definitely, though. R.I.P. to the main guy. I'm pretty sure he passed. Uh, this movie was trash. Absolute trash. It was very of the time, though. If you want to see like what the general attitude of Hollywood comic book movies were at that time period, just watch this movie. <laughs> it was so uh, yep. blatant. The characters were cartoons. The fight scenes, like, for no reason, he hooks himself up to his chandelier so he can do the spinny, shooty thing. <laughs> like, you don't do that on purpose. That's just how... Anyway, uh, you don't get it. We'll figure it out. It's okay. You're doing good, Punisher. Popcorn movie. Uh, I watched Mario, and uh, it was a, an again movie. I say popcorn in two. I might have said three last time. Uh, the hype is not there the second time around, so that took a little mm -hmm. away from it. But it's still... An incredible movie. The The CG is wonderful. It gets the award for Best Water, which uh, you would think Avatar The Way of Water would have won that award this year for me. No, nope, the water was beautiful in this movie. Okay. Uh, you know, CG stuff. Popcorn too. But that movie had, uh, th I think, three people that were in this next movie I watched, which was Anchorman. Uh, it had Seth Rogen. Very young Seth Rogen was in Anchorman, as well as Fred Armisen was Seth Rogen's dad. Uh, there was another one. Jack Black, Koopa, he was in the movie. So that's cool. It was good to see Anchorman again. That was one of those movies before Netflix. This is what every male watched over and over forever. And that's why we all quote Anchorman, and everyone knows that it's funny. Milk was uh, a bad it, choice. Yeah, everyone's got the quotes. It's yeah. still great. The ad-libs were different, I noticed, with this recording. A few weren't the one that I seen. Name? What was his dog's Baxter. name? Baxter. Baxter! <laughs> you are a little gentleman. Uh, <laughs> Oh, Tim Robbins was in it. So shout out Jack uh, Jacob's letter. <laughs> the glass case of emotion is an accurate response to a dog's death. Yeah. And um, I don't know. It's still a solid movie. That's still a popcorn in three. It has aged just fine. Yeah. Because of don't the satire like that it is. <laughs> uh, quick thing. I in the new movies I watched uh, the, the the trailers. Meg Ryan's back. Clearly had some work done, but why not? It'll be a cute movie. Who cares? The Freddy's. Uh, Freddy's movie, Five Nights at Freddy's. I want to say, again, kind of maybe a last word thing, but yeah, uh, it they added so much to what the story is because that other movie with Nicolas Cage stole the entire video game plot. Mm -hmm. So now I'm looking at this trailer, I have no idea what any of this is. They're adding so much story because someone already stole their movie. Uh, so I don't know, whatever. Oh, shoot. Yeah, I got to do a double feature. I haven't done a double feature in years. So before I saw Venice, I saw The Outlaw Johnny Black right before that. I had to run, run to the other theater. It was the um, kind of the, not a continuation, but another project from the people that made Black Dynamite, written and directed by uh, Michael Jai White and starred with him. A lot of the same cast is in this movie. So it was really cool to see everyone years later. Everyone was still funny and pleasant. It was not uh, the same caliber as Black Dynamite, though. Black Dynamite was a perfect spoof uh, homage to black exploitation films. And it was great. This movie was just more of a silly Western. They did some mm -hmm. things like tropes to make fun of cut Westerns and all, it just wasn't quite there. They had some strange scenes where like 
Now we have the natives captured you, so now you have to marry my ugly wife. And it was a man playing the ugly wife, and oh, it's like that's a funny scene, right? I mean, if you're a kid, I guess it's really like, what are we doing here? Maybe Strange that you guys put that in there, but it had some really, really funny parts. And one of my favorites is just so it was a softball joke, but every time they caught outlaw Johnny Black, the main guy, Michael J. White. They would hold up his wanted poster and say, "Yep, that's definitely him." And it was a whole different black guy on the poster, and they did it more than once. So, yeah, it's a spitting image. Like he has a beard. The man in the poster has no beard. They did some things with old West Wild Westy uh, church scene. The new reverends come into town. That's kind of cool. There's a love yeah. triangle in there. That's really funny. And overall, it's a good movie. I say popcorn and one. Okay. All right. Yeah, no, maybe that was, but that was probably a satire inside a satire. The Native yeah. American scene you were referring to, right? Yeah, yeah, it was that making was fun of it. A, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot, a lot of the uh, Native Americans were very clearly ginger white men. <laughs> 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 and, like gingers. <laughs> it was so yeah. funny. <laughs> so just so everybody knows watching us right now, uh, these films are satirical. They're making fun of Hollywood portrayals or the way Hollywood yeah. portrays yeah. certain ethnicities, certain races. Uh, yeah. in film so i so I'll it definitely did it that with black yeah. not as good as black dynamite did but it still did a decent job it's worth seeing okay um right. but i i gotta go let me turn it over to y'all keep it funky eh all right. all right jordan what were you watching this week all right so yeah i got to watching the netflix live action adaptation of mm-hmm. one piece oh, 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 oh. the uh you know as Josh has pointed out to us uh, a few times, it is one of the longest or is the longest running anime series, um, it, which is also available on Netflix. Uh, it's like 13 seasons. So good luck with yeah. that endeavor. It's too much for me to ever. Um, what is it like to. 40 episodes a season? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's there's like, I want to say like 500 episodes. It's something crazy. Um, you know, I've only ever seen a few episodes of the anime when it came out when I was a lot younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I have no real base of comparison to say like, oh, it was true to the true to the story or the original or whatever. Um, uh-huh. But it is super creative and it keeps, you know, the anime style. It's It's true to the anime style for sure. I can say that. The, the effects of it are kind of mid. Some of them are good. Some of them are very, very bad. Mm-hmm. And the dialogue is just, you know, it's on brand cheesy. Most of the costumes are good and they translate well from the anime to the live action. Mm-hmm. Uh, the action sequences are pretty good. <laughs> the, uh, the action sequences are pretty good. The adventures and encounters are, you know, they're kind of well crafted. I, I can't express how much though I hate the snail phones with and they have beards. Jordan, that's crazy. The yeah, snail their their phones are snails with faces and teeth, mm-hmm. I think, and they have beards and they're disgusting. It's always a different <laughs> snail. It's always a yeah. different snail. Like the snail's never the same. Oh god, it was ugh, every time they showed it, she I was puts like, it ah! in her ear. Oh god, no. Yeah, I remember yes. she puts it. <laughs> yeah like a little bluetooth is disgusting yeah. uh drac Dra- what is his name dracule mohawk that is a terrible name but he is yeah. so cool looking super badass design i thought i mean okay. you know just in cheesy anime fashion super cool design my new favorite word i found one of my new favorite words in this show and it's shitty oh <laughs> shitty yeah that was funny was that the clown, Shitty. right? The, I the think clown so, did that? yeah, yeah. A bit on the yeah. nose? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought it had a well-executed finale. I give this a popcorn and two. Yeah, hopefully Netflix doesn't can it, right? So we can get the second season, because obviously you don't get any resolution in this, and they've canned Full Metal Alchemist. They canned the other one that was supposed to be really big. I didn't watch any of these. What is it? Cowboy Bebop, right? Was the other one. Yeah, yeah. So, that one got immediately, psh, we're done with they that. They do it all uh, the time. They do it all actually, the time. Actually, this, this did get renewed for a second did season. It? And they're saying they have the storylines and whatnot in, in place to go like eight seasons. But, you know, they rarely. Now they just have ball. to pay the writers. Right. Yes. Exactly. Once they do that, we're good to go. Yeah, no. Uh, it reminded me why I'm not a huge fan of anime, to be frank. Explain yourself. <laughs> It was just silly, and it was fine, I guess, for the live action. My favorite was the pirate chef. 
That was yeah. my favorite character, the pirate chef mm -hmm. and his and his uh, apprentice, I guess you could say, the little Swedish kid. Mm -hmm. But it was it was a lot. The yeah. the fight scenes were cool. I will say that the fight scenes were pretty cool. The fishmen were obviously allegories for black people in America, like mm -hmm. very like bluntly that and yeah. it was super like obvious. I was like, "Okay, this is very clearly like they're they're representing black culture and how black culture feels like that's what they're trying to write into this i did you get any of that out of that because that's how i feel for sure I feel like that's what they're for trying sure. to do oh yeah okay yeah, yeah for sure why does fry not like that here's why because and why does fry talk about himself in the third person like a douchebag mm -hmm. but here's <laughs> why <laughs> here's why i don't like it because at the end of the they don't have any redeemable qualities they just turn them into terrible people yeah. at the end so I thought that that was a, a poor representation what, of what they were going for. Like, there's no redemption story with them. There's no recon reconciliation with what they did. It's literally just, it, it, it painted it in a bad light. And I didn't like that at all. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for me, I, I'll, I'll say it's a popcorn and one. What did you give it? I gave it a popcorn and two. Wow, that's a good rating. Popcorn and two. Okay. The graphics yeah. were good. The fight scenes were good. I mean, maybe I could bump it up if I rewatched it, but just the dialogue was a bit much. Uh, Yuffie, was that his name? Or Luffy? Is that his name? Yeah, Monkey D. Luffy. Yeah, <laughs> he was Every time he says his name, yeah. He, he was a lot to handle. It was it was, it was a bit much. Uh, there was a random scene in episode eight where he's like, ah, and I'm like, why is that a thing? Uh, but outside, and I get why. It's because it's in the anime. That's like his thing in the anime, yeah. right? But this is live action. Some yeah. things just don't translate the same, right? Just like mm -hmm. uh, Lion King for Disney. Like you you find new things when animals don't have a facial expressions. <laughs> yeah. Or like, you know, they, um, they, but they, the thing that they redeem about this is that they make fun of it a lot is how they, mm -hmm. they have their catchphrase when they do their final move or whatever their yeah. signature punch or whatever it is. Yeah, you have gum, to have one. Gum gum pistol or whatever he calls it. Yeah. Um, yeah, they obviously make fun of it. And I thought that was a good touch to make you be like, uh, you know, I w it made you laugh with them and not at them. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Understood. Yeah. What else were you watching? Uh, I got to watch a little uh, documentary. Uh, I would love. It cool. Yeah, I would love for Josh to have been a part of this one because I feel like this is a little bit in his alley of his alley. Uh -huh. um, in it's his a wheelhouse. In his wheelhouse, yeah. <laughs> This was on Netflix. Um, it's a documentary about influential rock drummers <gasps> and why they love drumming and who influenced them. Uh, the, you get a number of different interviews. You have the drummers. I'm not going to name them because then this list would get very long. Uh, the mm -hmm. drummers of Pink Floyd, Iron Maiden, Queen, Red Hot Chili Peppers, and a bunch of others. No Def Leppard, uh, huh? The drummer of Def Leppard, I don't One think so. No, 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 no. He's not really. He's, they talk about him a little bit, but they don't, he's not actually in it being interviewed. Gotcha. Yeah. There's a guy from a band I've never heard of who calls mm -hmm. himself, this is his name, at his moniker at the bottom of the screen, Rat Scabies. And it oddly fits him. If you watch this documentary, you're like, yeah, that guy's name is Rat Scabies for sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> They, um, you know, they each tell a little bit of their own stories and whatnot. There's some little bit of, you know, just cool drum antics for a show, but they spotlight a few. They talk about Charlie Watts of the Rolling Stones, uh, Keith Moon of the Who, Ginger Baker of Cream, and of course, John Bonham of Led Zeppelin. Uh, RIP to them all. I'm pretty sure they're all deceased now. No Foo Fighters, huh? I'm getting there. Oh, okay. um, th this came out because Taylor Hawkins... Mm -hmm. is interviewed throughout this um that is the drummer of the foo fighters mm -hmm. who is sadly deceased and he really does not look well in okay. this he looks like he is in the grips of some serious stuff he was great i was that one when he passed away that was uh that one hit me pretty hard but yeah you know as expected there's a lot of beatboxing and scatting throughout yeah. this like they're all kind of doing their and then I, da, 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 ba, 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 da, that is like 25 percent of the movie probably okay <laughs> um it's not too overwhelming for the uh, instrumentally inept like me okay i can't even like plunk on a piano and make it resembly sound something good it's just like 
Um, you just never but, had the lessons. Yeah, it, it ends very cool though in a little jam okay. session with these two female drummers um, that are from kind of indie bands, and um, also the the drummer from Jane's Addiction and Chad Smith from the from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. They do like a four person little drum session, and it's it's awesome. It's really okay. cool to watch. So um, I recommend this. I give it a popcorn and two. It was really pop and two. Yeah, for count me in. Count me in. Yeah. Uh, I also, I, I diversified kind of the different types of things I watched this week. I definitely wanted to get a little bit of everything. So I got to watch some stand-up comedy. Mm-hmm. I watched Shane Gillis, Beautiful Dogs. It, it started out a little, une- this is on Netflix, by the way, sorry. Uh, started out a little uneasy, but it settled in quickly. This is definitely your offensive humor. Like this is not going to be for, there, there may be some things in here that just immediately turn people off. I shamelessly, I'm going to say I laughed very hard throughout this. There were things that made me uncomfortable that I was like, oh God, like that's going to cause some, uh, you it's know. It's got to make a comeback, man. It's going to be cyclical. Like it's been crude humor has been gone for too long. I'm telling you that Jennifer Lawrence movie was just the tip of the iceberg. I think it's coming back. Yeah. He bags on, you know, some of his bits. He bags on Australia for a bit, which is pretty funny. Mm. Um, the thing is, I watched it on 9-11, which I believe was on Monday? Yeah. Tuesday, Monday? I watched it on 9-11, and he had, like, a, a pretty substantial bit where he's, t- he's making a, quite a bit of 9-11 jokes mm-hmm. and, like, Al-Qaeda jokes and in there. So that, just in the context especially, which it's always distasteful to make 9-11 jokes. Sometimes they're pulled off in a way that's like, uh, okay, all right, all right. Um but it just felt a little like it was like, ah, oh, today, uh, this isn't hitting right for me okay. right now, especially. But I chuckled a little bit at, at a couple of the com- the um, observations that he makes about some of the things. He says the terrorist war footage, like, okay, you see footage of Marines and stuff, and they're highly trained, and they they don't even talk. They just, you, you see uh, a drone strike, and it's just like, boom, and then you hear Kill confirm, and that's it. Like that's American war footage, but mm-hmm. the the Al Qaeda ter- terrorist footage is so much more relatable. Just just the common man, like they're just sitting there and they blow up like one truck, and they all go, oh, like like that is a normal human reaction that we would all have to like, oh shit, it actually worked. Like oh my okay. god, we did something. Yeah, um, it's it's yeah, it's just super not PC. Uh, but there is a lot of continuity all throughout his jokes. Like he goes from different subjects that have nothing to do with each other and he chains them kind of together really well, like connects things. Yeah. Uh, he has really poor body language throughout this. Gotcha. He's just a little uncomfortable and he makes the he, Isn't he the one that does the, the Republican jokes as well? Like I don't the... know. I've never seen any of his other podcasts and I didn't okay. know who he was. Mm -hmm. Uh, like why he was relevant really but then he mentions that he does like a really popular podcast among bros among bro culture yeah um and i was like okay i know his name now for sure like i've heard of him that's Mm -hmm. where i know him from and he talks about how he totally has republican face like that's (laughs) his problem yeah so i could see yeah he probably does have a a long bit because he does he touches on that a little bit in there but he, he with his, even with his poor body language, his his facial expressions and stuff really sell some of his jokes that don't really hit. But he kind of gives you a second to like to absorb it. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, gotcha. oh, okay, I got you. Um, I give this a popcorn and two as well. Okay, pop two for that one, and I think you got one more, right? I have one more, uh, and it's an actual movie I watched. I watched Bird Box Barcelona. Heavy on the subtitles, right? very heavy on subtitles there's actually a lot of different languages in this movie it's mm-hmm. not just uh spanish um it's in, there's english there's just english in it there's french um yeah there's, it's there's a mix of a lot of different languages going on in this movie which was cool i thought it was mm-hmm. good um it's a good really good focused spin on the concept of this movie it's not just um a, a sequel like um, you know, from the Sandra Bullock, I believe was in the first one, right? Yeah, Sandra Bullock's Bird Box One with uh, MGK. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it it wasn't just uh, you know, let's just let's just keep going with the blindfolds and the yeah. invisible aliens and whatnot. They put okay. an interesting take uh, a subplot into this that was very I felt maybe a little Resident Evil esque. Okay. Um, yeah, you get a you get a really good plot twist super early in the movie, like the first fifteen minutes. You're like, whoa, and it sets up the whole movie for some good stuff. Uh, it the first one was a bit of a phenomena when it came out. You know, you had early the TikTok, bird box I, challenge. The bird box challenge. I think it was on Vine or something. Yeah, it's stupid stuff. But you know, and I didn't find it that great. Uh, I actually thought that this one was better. In a number of ways, if you discount it being a little just more of a foreign film, it definitely feels that way. Okay. Um, is shot that way. Uh, it, it ends very interesting, interestingly and wanting more. Like it leaves you on a cliffhanger to like, oh, we, we could get a sequel to this. We probably won't. Um, so I give it a very, a popcorn and one, almost a two, but a, a, a high popcorn and one for sure. Okay, hi, popcorn in one for Barcelona. Blind Barcelona. Barcelona. <laughs> I, I was in Madrid. That's where I was. Okay, so I can't say I've been there. All right, pop plus one, but you can see a sequel. Uh, as Josh crushed one of our would be drunk classic comedies, <laughs> so did I. I don't know if you saw the reel I put out today, Jordan, but I watched mm -hmm. Liar Liar with jim carrey oh i love that actor and that should be a drunk classic for me yeah. it is still a pop too it is it is one i don't think jim carrey gets enough credit for his physical comedy i know he's known as a physical comedian but mm. no one ever i don't ever hear people put him in the top echelon it's always like belushi farley and i just don't think he gets enough credit for it i, I really don't i think his physical comedy is hilarious right like mm -hmm. i'm kicking my ass do oh, you mind that's the best. yeah <laughs> who did this a madman your honor about six foot three gangly teeth <laughs> 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 like making fun of himself right because he yeah. can't lie so he describes himself in such a funny way i'm in my <laughs> knees in a five thousand dollar suit <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, there, there's so many, again, super quotable. Here comes the claw. Jerry, you got to look out for the claw. Oh, it's the claw. The claw is going to get you. Right? Or riding the um, lift to catch up to his son, Max, as he's pounding on the window to try to get a hold of him. <laughs> so there's, it, it is one of those, you scratched my car. No, that was there. Was it? <laughs> well, what are you going to do about it? I'm going to bend over and take it right in the tailpipe. <laughs> so it's, it's, it, it is one of my favorite movies. And again, the uh, scene where he meets the partners in the boardroom is it's one of the best rants you'll ever hear in a movie, right? It's not entirely PC, but it, it is very funny <laughs> when you watch that boardroom. Simmons is old. <laughs> Uh, what's his face? His wife left him because she can't stand the smell of his breath, right? Or uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the big guy. <laughs> what's up, Fletcher? Your cholesterol, fatty. Like none of this would ever get made no. today, right? What's it gonna be? A pop mark eventually. Like <laughs> it's so... the the pen is blue. The GD pen is blue. Like all it it, it is. One of the funnier movies, I think, that doesn't get a lot of credit in his catalog. Mm -hmm. For me, it is a pop three. I think it, it's it's just so rewatchable. And if yeah. you just remove some of the disbelief, like, again, him trying to sleep his way to the top, right? By mm -hmm. sleeping with one of the partners mm -hmm. and missing his son's birthday. Like, that is something that I, I honestly believe someone that's too hyper career driven might do. They might miss their kid's birthday to try to, you know, progress their own career. Why did you do it? I thought I could progress my career by making her squeal. Uh, like there's so many quotable lines in this movie. So I don't know. Have you seen Liar Liar? Oh yeah, for sure. Great yeah. movie. Love it. So 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 how do you feel about the quotable? I mean, yeah, the my one of my favorite lines, like I quote it all the time, I'm kicking my own ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> Um, I love it. And yeah, his, you could definitely see um, what you're saying about the physical comedy thing. Um, he definitely, he says, I've watched a documentary on uh, man on the moon, I believe yeah. it's called. 
Andy, um, about the Andy, Andy Kaufman and I or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, you could definitely see the correlation there. I I agree with you a hundred percent. It's a great movie. The wife yeah. is really cute, really pretty in that movie. Um, the kid is a good actor in the movie. She was on was ER cool too. Really? Yeah, the wife. She mm-hmm. was on ER for a while. That's like what I knew her from before Liar Liar was ER. But yeah, uh, that kid, he was in a bunch of stuff, right? After that film. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't just Liar Liar. He was in all kinds of things. I got to see his face. Yeah. You're going to pull up his face? You're going like, to yeah. like, ah, let me take a look. But yeah, J- Jerry the Doctor was an ancillary actor in quite a few uh, movies. The one that was, you know, moving in on their yeah. family to be the new stepdad. So yeah, that, yeah. Did you see the kid? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> he was in a if bunch of was, stuff after that. Yeah. So it is, I believe, your butter or your drunk classic this week. Did you have one picked out? Um, yes, I do. Okay. And it is going to be, I'm going to put a, I want to jump. So I so badly want to jump into the horror. I'm ready for it, but I'm going to give you one more before that. Okay. Hmm. It is going to be a movie with Kevin Bacon called Cop Car. Well, I would love to see that show. I'm very interested in watching that show. Cop Car. It is called Cop Car. Yeah. You got it. Trippy movie. I don't remember it being if it being particularly like a great movie, Mm -hmm. but it's a weird, interesting, trippy movie. Cop Car. Yeah. I feel like you're just doing that to get us. I don't feel like it's actually a drunk classic, and I feel like you're doing it to get both of us. I'll ask. I'll ask Josh if he's seen it. I don't think I've seen that one. Now we've got two choices here, Jordan. For the butter on top this week, we've got Dumb Money with Seth Rogen and his crew. Okay. We've got The Expendables 4. If you're you leaving think? it up to me to a choice, unfortunately, I don't know if I'll be able to see it this week. Okay. I will be All on right. vacation in Nashville. I'm going to try to definitely be in on the episode next week from my hotel in Nashville in the morning, but I uh-huh. don't think I'll be able to catch it. So I'm going to I'm gonna pass the buck to you. Well, I'm sorry, Josh. As you know, Jordan... I'm a Stallone guy. Yeah. And one of my first drunk classics was Rambo. And now, if you leave it up to me for the butter on top, we're watching Expendables 4 with 50 Cent. (laughs) Oh, Fry. And Mm. Megan Fox. (laughs) And Sly Stallone. And Jason Statham. (laughs) And the who's who cast of Expendables 4. Mm -hmm. So... We will have fun with that. Jordan, where can the people get a hold of you if they want to recommend a movie we should watch? At Twitter, at Popcorn and Beer. At Popcorn and Beer. I promise I will make Jordan eventually put up an Instagram, guys. It's coming. (laughs) We appreciate you. We love you. Thank you so much for watching every week. We've got a a very loyal audience that tunes in. I know that you guys are loyal because I see the videos or the, the count go up on some of the older ones that you may have missed. And so I'm watching the viewership go up on those. And we really appreciate you. Please keep tuning in. I promise you there's so much more to come. The website will be here soon, like I said, before the end of October. Uh, and then we're going to we're gonna be looking into merch. Lots of stuff coming on. But thank you again for joining us this week. We'll see you at the movies. You bring the popcorn, and we got the beer. Mm-hmm.